Hi everyone, this is Lily's Tarot. Welcome to my channel. Um, this is going to be a um, sort of like a study time reading. So we've had our first full moon of the year, which is the full moon in Cancer. I think they call it the wolf moon. All right, so we're just going to have a little deeper look into what that means for us, how we're feeling, um, and yeah, where that's going to take us for the rest of this month. So I'll have a little read about what full moon in Cancer means. So a personal issue reaches resolution. Things are likely to get very heated as full moon in Cancer is a super emotional sign. So there could be something of an explosion of feelings around now or surrounding your question. It's important to be sensitive to other people when you pull this card. There are some very fine sensibilities around, so tread carefully as you move towards your goals or dreams. This card indicates an especially feminine time. It also heralds the time to deal with any family issues coming up. Nothing to worry about. It signals a challenge is now coming to an end. This card also suggests both that a domestic matter or private issue will come to a head, and that is a great time to move house. The answer to your question lies in being a kind leader. This is the time for you to step up and agree to overcome your insecurities. So attuned to the moon, it may be best to move towards what you want in a sideways manner. Additional meanings for the card, meditate to soothe heightened emotions. Don't be clingy, stop sulking. Have you had enough family time lately? And so the teaching is, the heightened emotions of the moon cancer combination can't be ignored. However, cancer is one of the moon's two home signs along with Taurus. So astrologically speaking, the moon loves to be in this sign. In fact, she rules cancer. This means that this card, there's a sense that all is as it should be. Or don't worry, we'll all, oh, soon will be well. No. Or don't worry, all will soon be well. Sorry. Wow. Mm. I kind of felt like a lot of us were just sort of gently creeping into 2023. <laughs> okay, just scared to make any mistakes. But also being quite aware of our own emotions and sort of where that's coming from as well. All right, so let's have a look. So let's have a look at our overall energy with this full moon. Let's take a look, guys. So this reading is not going to resonate with everyone. So take what does, leave what doesn't. Also check your sun, moon, rising and your Venus signs as well. So yeah, we've got angel of love and we've got hostilities. So yeah, there's definitely issues surrounding the heart, okay? Or you may be feeling unloved. All right, or even during this time, wanting to give yourself love and keeping sort of, um, you know, people who don't respect you or, you know, deem you as worthy or treasure you or whatever. You're just kind of like ready to battle them at any moment. <laughs> but I do feel like maybe, because maybe some people are sulking, but maybe it's more like feeling of loss loneliness you know that is surrounding your heart right now yeah we've got discipline we've got insurance here and we've got passion so yeah i feel like a lot of you are going to be sort of expressing yourselves um in a, in, a, in a creative way, you know, maybe this is through your art, this is through writing, this is through, um, you know, music, whatever this is for you. I feel like a lot of you are going to be shedding parts of yourself um, over the next few, few months. And really, <clears throat> I think the defensiveness that's coming from everybody is like, no, I need to dedicate my time to, you know, my ambitions, my goals, my dreams. I don't have time for people to, you know, stab me in my heart, stab me in my back. You know, if I let them in a little bit, this is usually what happens. So it's like you're holding your heart in your hands at this time. And you're saying, you know what? I just prefer to protect myself. Okay. And anyone who threatens this can get it. All right. So now you're using this self-discipline. All right. Into, because I feel like you've been thrown off a lot in your life through relationships. 
the healing process, the, the, the getting over things, the rebuilding, the going back. And, you know, it just gets all really tiring, you know, but you also realize how many dreams you put on the back burner. So for me, this is a positive time. Yes, it's an emotional, sad time because we tend to look back and, and sort of more think about what we regret, like what we didn't do. OK, but now we're able to sort of look forward and say, well, this is where I stand right now. I can't change the past, but I can change how I move forward. OK, and you guys are super, super strong. OK, that's why you have this endurance here. You guys are solid as a rock, even if you feel at times you've wavered. OK, you are almost indestructible. OK, it's like that song. You are titanium. All right. <laughs> you guys are going to be fine. You feel strong. You feel grounded. And that's even if you don't necessarily have a solid foundation. This is everything I'm talking about is how you feel within yourself. OK, and that is the most important thing here. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, look at that, taking a risk. This is like my Aries card here. This is a leap of faith. All right. I even feel like some of you are going to be expressing yourself in creative ways that, you know, to you, you're just doing your thing and expressing yourself. Maybe for some of you, it's just a hobby. But for a lot of you, you're going to find that, you know, actually, I can turn this into a business. I can make money from this. I'm super talented at this. This is just one of my many gifts that I have. Look at that movement. I feel like you're just moving away from everything that is hostile. OK, and that could sort of infiltrate that heart space you know, an attack is like, no, I'm not with that. I'm moving away from all of that. There's a part of you that definitely wants to cry. OK, so I feel like you're, you're doing that through your art. High Priestess of Earth, yeah. So you're finding new ground for yourself and you're going to be feeling very solid as you go into the year, even if you are still crying and you are still in pain. OK, you're moving towards what is of your highest good. OK, and creativity right now is going to be the thing, OK, that keeps your mind busy, gives you inspiration, OK, and will also give you a sense of achievement, you know, and this could really just be anything, you know, like if I think for me, well, my main thing is like music, dancing, but obviously, you know, it's a weekend vibe, but well, I dance in my house too, you know, but um. My main thing for me is cooking. So like, I love to create food. I, I, and I feel like when I'm at my lowest is when I, I, I'm constantly cooking and I'll cook for everybody. And you know, and I feel like that's my way of expressing myself, getting out my pain, being creative, and then being able to have like, you know, I made that food. There's a sense of achievement there, you know, and I feel good, I fed myself. You know, I call it soul food, especially if I'm, you know, feeling low or whatever. So how do you feed your soul? And I think that's what they want you to focus on this month. All right, I'm going to give you a colour too. Every time I tap the table. <laughs> My daughter bought me that for Christmas. She's like, Mum, do you even use it? Yeah, they're in my videos. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks for supporting me. All right, let's give you guys a color for the, oh, oh, that's too many. That's too many. So have this color around you. You can wear it, eat it, drink it, get your nails done, lipstick. I don't know. Okay, we have bronze, strengthen your body. Okay, so maybe as well, you know, I'm not massively into working out, okay? I, oh. But there are little things I do, you know, and I feel like it's more about getting stress and tension out of my body than anything else, because we do still hold a lot of tension in our body as well. OK, or maybe some of you were just like, I used to work out. I used to bodybuild. I used to do this. You know, they're saying look, strengthen your body. OK, because this is our armor. This is how we are prepared to go into war OK, or go to battle or whatever it is. So we've got bronze. Strengthen your body. Bronze inspires strength, wisdom and love, helping you to get promotions, bringing wealth into your life and attracting the right people into your business. 
Bronze also aids in successful negotiations, teaching people to trust their instincts, use bronze to break destructive emotional patterns, release irrational fears and anxieties and flush toxic thoughts and feelings out of your body. Allow the bronze ray to bring strength and vitality back to your body. Nice. Okay, you guys could be wearing some bronze, you know. All right, let's have a look at you guys spiritually for the month of January with this full moon in cancer you know i gotta tread carefully around this time because my daughter's cancer <laughs> i literally tiptoe like this <laughs> even when she talks to me i just stay still like this maybe she can't see me <laughs> cancer's boy yeah we're fit you got okay so here you've got fertility and you've got intention wow Okay, so for a lot of you as well, this <laughs> you guys are really sort of thinking about, you know, love. But whether you're kind of running from it or not, or keeping yourself safe from it or not right now, I feel like your intention in the end is to have this soulmate connection. All right. But I feel like before you get into that, it's about finding balance with yourself. Because a lot of the time as well, when we're in pain and we don't know why, <laughs> we're like, what's wrong? Oh, we're going through stuff. We know why. But... Sometimes it just cuts a little bit deeper. It's because we're actually going through a rebirth, all right? And it cuts like a knife, it hurts so bad. And half the time we don't even know we're going through a whole transformation, all right? And I guess most of us will be going through this because you know, we all set you know, New Year's resolutions, oh, this year I want this, or we all set our intentions. So naturally we're kind of going through this rebirth. Okay, and then I feel like a lot of you are birthing projects this year. Okay, but you're having to find balance between your light and your dark side. And that is about not letting fear inside, okay, or the negative sort of self-fulfilling prophecies we like to tell ourselves, imposter syndrome, whatever it is. And really just set your intentions. Okay, because I feel like they're just saying here that you are in charge of your own destiny. Okay, even when we feel like we have zero control, we do have it. It's just sometimes options seem so far-fetched or so far away that we tell ourselves it's impossible. But I'm a little by little person, you know, I believe in, in even if you do one small thing a day, okay, by the time you get to the end of that week, you could have done seven things. Whereas if you did nothing, that whole week went by, nothing happened. Following week, nothing happened. It's just a lot of the times our dreams are big. Or the situations we're in seem so huge to get out of, you know? But we forget one day at a time, one problem at a time. And try not to hold too much space for the things that we can't, you know, fix. They're out of our hands. We got the shark. Okay. Oh, careful now. The my books. Okay, we got the shark. Sorry, just got interrupted there. We've got the shark card. Directness, exposure, revealing true nature and desire. The shark is only dangerous when we don't acknowledge it. This card indicates that something big needs to be exposed. It's lurking in the depths and creating tension. Shark energy takes over us when we are hesitant to be honest, to be totally ourselves or to, or to say what we really want. It may be tempting to continue pretending nothing is wrong, but when shark energy is at play, we feel its presence encircling us. Uh, when in balance, intriguing, captivating, mysterious, when out of balance, sneaky, destructive, to bring into balance, honesty. Yes. And that is it. It's about being honest with ourselves. And that's why I feel as well, I say like creatively, you're gonna be letting a lot of things out. OK, maybe there's situations that come up every now and then because we've just repressed them the whole time, you know, and then here they do. They just pop up and you're like, oh, hello. Got to deal with this again, do I? Or we can even just push it back down again or say, oh, we don't need to deal with this. Not today. You know, but we either keep getting disrespected or that situation keeps coming towards us, but just with different people in it, you know, <laughs> all the same. All right, so let's see. For the month of January, full moon in Cancer. Yeah, see, they want to get you out of this anxiety. 
Okay, feeling as if you're lost, hopeless, have no control. It's not true. Okay, maybe you just can't get this particular someone out of your head that you feel like you've, you know, spent or dedicated so much time. But they're really asking you to move forward. Yeah, rebirth. You got it twice. <laughs> All right, you, were, you, you know what? You're just outgrowing a lot of things. You're outgrowing the person you've probably been in love with for a long time. That's painful within itself because deep down you still want them, okay? But you're realizing that this person, you know, is off limits, you can't have them. They don't fit in your life the way you thought, whatever it is, all right? And, and I feel like this is this painful process. Maybe some of you are actually coming to terms with accepting the fact that, you know, you're not gonna be with this person. Okay, so let's see. Let's get you another message. Which one? Oh. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Don't be afraid, guys, to let it out, okay? Whatever it is you're going through, try not to be holding it in, okay? And if there's something that you're supposed to face, know that you're strong enough to face it. Okay, we've got Matangi. Look at her. I won't mess with her. All right, let's have a read. Okay, so we have She is the tantric queen of outcasts Unveiling hidden inner power To thrive outside conventional society She holds the secret teachings Of the power of the voice Of the healing power of art and music She is the divine feminine medicine For the lost, the alienated Those who have been cast aside If you have been denied love and respect She brings healing and empowerment If you have suffered rejection, abandonment Or being labelled as unworthy in any way She brings dignity and repair She is the ignition of a Creative, joyful, and vibrant life path. That's it, girls. Get creative. <laughs> All right, let me see. Read something else for you. <clears throat> Meeting it. Oh, Matangi is the liberator, and the appearance in a reading implies you cannot find fulfillment in the dreams another has dreamed for you, nor in the values that mainstream society holds. You have a path and a purpose that needs to break with societal conditioning, and sometimes that will mean experiencing what it is to be an outsider. However, you are never alone, and really, you belong to a soul tribe of unique beings with Matangi as our spiritual queen. There is nothing wrong with being different. You can find a way to belong that does not compromise your essential self, but rather frees and empowers you to belong to yourself fully. In a reading, she augurs the overcoming of a toxic pattern or situation. If you have been feeling at the mercy of another person or situation, she reassures you that you have the spiritual power within to claim your energy as your own. She will assist you in shielding psychic contaminations or residues from others, and you need have no fear. As Matangi operates outside systems and convention, if you are feeling afraid or victimized within a system of bureaucracy, for example, you are asked to seek sanctuary in her and trust in her overriding power. I like this. Free yourself from toxic. I felt like I was taking you to church. I was like, let's get the choir out. But no, I love that for you guys. I think that's amazing. All right, and let's just have a little look. All right, full moon in Cancer, guys. You are gonna kick this year's ass, okay? I just know you guys are gonna do it. All right, don't be scared. Oh, we got willingness. You are able to compromise if the end result is love. We have virtue. You acknowledge your loving spiritual attributes that encourage others to grow. Acceptance. You are ready to release control of situations or people and lovingly embrace the rhythm of life. We said that earlier, didn't we? Discernment. You are developing the skill to distinguish love from fear and truth from illusion. Okay. So don't lose your beautiful qualities about yourself. 
all right? You're just arming yourself with more protection and even more love for the people that deserve it, okay? All right, let's get you another message, my lovelies. Full moon in Cancer. Oof, we got abundance. That's what I wanted to see. I was like, where's the abundance at? Yeah. Okay. I haven't read this book in a while. Let's see. Okay. Be open to accept um, an abundance of love. Yes. Okay, let's see. Oh, number one, of course. A person's manner sends subtle signals to others about how they feel about themselves. If a person walks in a hesitant way, wearing a nervous expression, they will unconsciously tell the world that they are anxious. The person who acts in an unnecessarily guarded way towards others with head bowed and hidden behind a hoodie will unconsciously convey a message that says keep away. In contrast, the person who is friendly and approachable with open body language will be far more likely to receive interest and affection from others. How life treats us is mirrored by our actions to one degree or another. When you select this card, the angelic realm is reminding you to be open to the potential of love and abundance and to deem yourself worthy of it in the manner you move through life. The signals you send to the world will be reflected back to you. So strive to send signals of an optimistic disposition in order to increase your opportunities to receive love in abundance. Yeah, because we kind of talked earlier about, you know, a bit of that defensiveness that you might have, okay? <laughs> so, you know, I, I try and see only love. All right, and even if I'm in a room full of people that I think, oh no, they don't like me, they hate me, I can still look around and find a few people that are like, okay, I love you, you're good. You will always find love. And even if there's no love in that room, tell yourself, I love me, that's it, okay? We've got solutions, success that comes from objective compromise, self-control and patience, forgiving and healing energy. And we've got two hearts dedicated to creating something wonderful, kindred spirits, don't give up on those you love. Ooh, right, we're gonna have a bit of shadow work, okay? Just, just a little bit. All right, it's important. Because we've still got time until the next full moon, okay? So let's see, we could really do some work on ourselves every month out of the year, okay? Right, full moon in Cancer. For the collective shadow well, oh, okay. Then I hear we use, okay. All right. Ultimatum. Let's see if you okay. Let's go. If you've drawn this sig sigil, you are not seeing that your own programming is making you behave in a robotic way. This automatic way of behaving overrides your conscious capacity to know what is right to think, say, and do, and consequently use your free will to take this action. I'm just gonna go to the bits that I feel, because this one's a long one. Mm -hmm. Sorry, because they're going into examples. As adults, we are already conditioned, we are already trained, we have been programmed by our society, by our religion, by our parents, by our friends, by the circumstances we encounter in our life and by ourselves. The process of awakening, also referred to as the process of enlightenment, is nothing more than the process of breaking free from this programming. Healing this is nothing more than breaking the patterns that no longer benefit our progression. The average person experiences some positive programming and some negative programming, but this programming is mostly unintentional. The negative programming most people are subjected to is the result of negative beliefs passed from one generation to the next. After all, a belief is nothing more than a pattern, or the negative programming may be the result of negative experiences that cause the person to become conditioned in a certain way. For example, a death in the family may result in someone developing a pattern where they do not get close to or intimate with people in order to avoid the possibility of losing them. For most people, the negative programming they receive from other people is unintentional by the person programming them. For example, many parents have no idea that they are conditioning their kids in a negative way. 
The negative programming the parent is giving their child is done out of the love for their child. This is the way that so many negative programs are implanted in mind by convincing yourself and the person you are programming that it is for their own good when really it is detrimental to them. If you have drawn this sigil, your programming is at play in this situation, not your conscious mind and conscious free will. You are following a pattern that has been programmed into your system long ago without any awareness of that pattern being what is currently in control of your thoughts, words and actions. That program may be totally counter to your actual best interests and or the best interests of others. Ask yourself, what pattern am I stuck in? If you become aware of the pattern and remember how and why it was programmed, you have the capacity to step outside that program and either follow it or turn it off. Once you become aware of the pattern and how they, sorry, and how and why it was programmed, you have entered the realm of conscious free choice. So I'm going to ask you again, this is me now, what pattern am I stuck in? Maybe that's where we need to start for the month of January. Yeah? Yeah, keep it nice and light. All right. Okay. All right, so I'm going to read... Um, mm -mm -mm, a spiritual thing before I go. Okay? meaning cancer we have drop into your hearts there is a place of light within that no darkness can touch it cannot be shamed, it can never be made impure. It is never lost or darkened or unavailable to us. Though we may forget sometimes sitting in a darkened room and not realizing that we can stand up and walk into the light so close to us, just on the other side of the doorway to the heart. Whatever may arise, great joy, great sorrow, drop into your heart and offer it to the divine, gently bowing your forehead to your hands in prayer. Connect mind to heart, let yourself have some peace. It wants you, you know. This oracle brings you an offering. The divine would like you to offer whatever is bringing your heart trouble or of course joy. The divine would like to receive this from you as a gift that it may return to you some special blessing. Place your hands at your heart and in genuine reflection, perhaps you may choose to offer your heart burden or light now. Either will be joyfully received by the divine and you shall be graced with a gift in return. That's nice. All right, guys, I hope that was enough to kind of get you through the month of January. Remember, try and have this color bronze around you as much as you can. All right. But yeah, take care, guys. Really, uh, self-care, very important. Be gentle. Take regular breaks if you are, you know, doing some extensive uh, trauma or healing work this month. Yeah. So please be kind to yourself and others. Love you guys so much. Bye.